What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel, Boozer here, thanks for stopping by. A lot to unpack in this video, we're going to talk all about the Serpent event and everything that's going on right now. I haven't been able to upload any uh, content on this, mainly because I have been like kind of unknowingly uh, battling like a stomach illness the last couple days ever since coming back from my short vacation. So I apologize for the lack of consistent content. Um, but hopefully um, we can get back into the rhythm of things uh, as I get better hopefully soon in any event let's talk about this brand new serpent titan event that just dropped so we got the five star mithrala soul up for grabs um, for her five star is very impactful because you get the plus 75 accuracy and plus 75 resistance so she basically can fully utilize all of it because her passive converts uh, accuracy into resistance so it's a very good uh, soul for Mithral, but 1500, as we know, is very, very expensive. It's equivalent to roughly a fusion event, these Titan events. So totally understandable if you want to skip this. Um, in terms of uh, how good Mithral is and all that, I do have a showcase on her. She's one of the best free champions that we can get. Um, she might be the best in terms of overall usefulness. She's basically good in all areas, arena, PvP, Hydra, like everything. Um, to various degrees. She's not going to be like super end game. Uh, although she might be. She's one of the champions that can consistently get super high resistance so that she can be protected from CC effects, um, lockout and all that stuff. So she's one of the better candidates to build up to be in that role. Um, but for most late game application, we don't see her right now couple small things that are a little bit different in this Titan event compared to old ones. We do have more pieces of gear here as opposed to previously. I think this is kind of welcome change because um, these thresholds were relatively pretty low hanging fruit anyways. They weren't really exciting uh, pieces of uh, rewards. Um, I would suggest um, if you are a casual player, I would suggest definitely getting the one star from Mithrala at least. Um, because she gains 7500 HP from it, it's very impactful. Um, you don't need to go for the 2 star, so there's no real reason to overextend to get the 2 star because it's kind of like just plus attack. Uh, the 3 star is also very good because you do pick up some of these nice legendary pieces as, long as, the, uh, as well as the soul stone. And the 3 star gives you plus defense, which is really, really strong for Mithral as well. So I'd say for most players that don't have a high soul of Mithrala, getting the 1 or 3 star is very, very reasonable and uh, very good for Mithrala. The big decision comes when if you want to go for 4. It's The 4 or Mith Mithrala isn't that impactful because it's just crit damage. Um, but the goodies along the way are actually very nice. The Eternal Soul, the Void Shard here, um, the Legendary Tome here. I just brought up some of my old uh, notes here. Um, so the top path is actually the Zinnigir path. This was back in January. And then the bottom path is the Rathalos path. So pretty close together, I believe, January and February. So we see the Void Shard here at 840 and the Void Shard here at 840. It's basically in line with the Void Shard here as well, 840. Uh, previously, the Legendary Book was actually at the 600 mark. And then so it's gotten pushed back uh, a little bit further. Um, these pieces would have been um, essences or um, powder, for example, or um, shogun material uh, or energy. So in terms of not having that and getting six star protection gear, I'm, I'm okay with it. And I'm sure a, a newer players would definitely benefit from this super high level gear as well. So as I was saying, you don't need to get the four star Mithral if you don't intend on going all the way with the five star. Like I said, the five star is very, very impactful. Good goodies along the way. But if you decide to skip the four star, uh, skip this fourth tier of rewards, there's no problem with stopping at three because three is already very good and impactful for Mithrala. Overall, do I feel like people should do this? Yes, I think people should do this. Mithral is a great champion. She's somebody that everybody will eventually get, sometimes pretty quick. You end up getting Mithrala often faster than Lydia nowadays, and Mithral arguably is better in more areas than Lydia at this current time. Um, she's also very special in the fact that she can consistently reach super high resistance levels, so even for an endgame player, she might find some use in some arena settings. But I definitely recommend trying to do this. Um, I do have one account that has a 4-star already, and I might just skip it uh, going for the 5-star because it is a pretty big commitment for 
um, of two week period. So that's something that I have to decide. But on my other account, I will be going for this uh, five star for sure. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about is that Plarium dropped the ball yesterday with providing us some details on what is happening um, in uh, relation to some of the events so far. So there is a progressive event happening and it's going to be for, let me bring up uh, the uh, progressive event here. So it is going to be for these champions. It's going to be a four day event. I was hoping they would have separate events per day so that you got a choice. But in this case, we have four days of these uh, champions. Um, obviously, these two epics are going to be useful for my Kage uh, hunters that are still looking for epics. These champions aren't particularly, um, I would say, not particularly super sought after for myself personally. However, there are great champions here. Grand Oak Podrig would be probably the best one here. Um, universally super good for Hydra. I wouldn't mind a second one. You can build a second one for a second team. Also fills my faction guardians. Uh, UDK obviously still very good in arena. The rest of them, you can find some uses for them, but they're not going to be like super top tier. Uh, Rector Draft still very viable uh, epic champion as well. For the voids, um, we are looking at Senna, uh, Senna Amberheart here. She's actually pretty cool. I did a showcase on her as well. Uh, she definitely gets a lot of turn meter from her passive and continuous heals. Uh, after that, we have the uh, the special poison cloud lady, Senza, Grail Bearer. She's actually a good champion, but I think better champion for early game cha uh, early game account. She does bring defense, uh, decreased defense and weaken on one move, which is really, really nice. And she has this pretty special poison cloud ability, but so far it hasn't been super impressive uh, in terms of what you can actually use it for, but it's still a pretty impressive move nonetheless. The epics here are pretty decent. Dimitha makes the unkillable teams, and then Eurogram can be still very good in some solo applications. But I'm not sure if I'm going to be pulling Void Shards for this event, of course. Uh, for me, it's going to be Sacred Shards. I got 45 Sacred Shards ready to burn for any kind of event. Um, but like I said, none of these are particularly uh, enticing. And uh, we're looking at non boosted rates here, so not super, super pumped about that. Um, there is a free ninja event going on, so if you don't have ninja, you're going to get a uh, chance to get them for free. It's a multi-day login uh, reward, so uh, make sure you guys pick him up. He's still pretty good in all, uh, all areas, great boss killer, um, but he's been surpassed or power crept um, in recent years, but he's still very good, and of course he's going to be free. My suggestion would be to line him up with a champion chase event if you can and claim him during a champion chase event so that you get some extra points. But as devoted free-to-play players, you guys should already know that. Uh, after that, we have a reflex uh, progressive reflex drop of uh, fever drop event so you get some boosted rates on reflex and regeneration. Great sets for these. Perfect timing for the... Um, path of the serpent they all lined up super well with the path of the serpent we got the sharp pulling progressive events we got the dungeons uh with the boosted rates on great gear sets all going into this path of the serpent so in this video we're going to keep going talking about the serpent titan event with the path of the serpent event and we'll go over the best uh best route or path in this path so let's jump right into that all right so here we are we got a pretty short-ish path it looks like and pretty uniform which is kind of nice to see so there's no real tricks got a big stone down here got some juicy uh top tier essences here mythical books obviously the mega whale uh, item here uh to me yeah this looks pretty straightforward especially with the points here kind of low-hanging fruits um, 300 points allocated here. Keep in mind that if you're planning to go for the five star, you can only lose 250 points. So you definitely want to put some effort into this. It's a four day event. So four days worth of dungeon grinding. You can definitely, uh, put in some pretty good work, uh, towards this event. I would suggest that you plan out your dungeon farming for the next four days and then pull shards as opposed to pulling shards on day one, for example. Um, because your dungeon farming might actually alleviate some of your shard pulling um, needs. Keep in mind that shard pulling is probably the most effective way to finish this event. Okay, so let's talk about this. We have 300 points up there for grabs. Like I said, you can only lose 250 points if you plan to go for the 5 star. 
Previously, I believe these pass only had 200 points, um, but they vary between two and 300 points. We also have a deck of fate coming up next week. We can anticipate that the deck of fate either is 200 or 300 points as well. Um, so if you're planning to skip this path of the serpent, you're probably going to be facing down the deck of fate uh, next week. So if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, there is a deck of fate coming here on Tuesday. We don't have any info on this, but I can assume that it's probably going to be champion training. You see champion training here. It's ending on Sunday and then there's going to be likely another champion training starting here. So I would probably uh, expect champion training for the deck of fate. And since the summon event ends here on Sunday with a one day break, it might be summoning again. So it might be summoning plus champion training for this deck of fate. So if you plan to skip the path of the serpent, uh, sorry, if you, yeah, if you, yeah, sorry, yes, if you plan to skip the path of the serpent, be prepared to do the deck of fate. And the way the deck of fate is set up usually is that you can't guarantee the points from it unless you can guarantee yourself flipping every single card. Because the last thing you want to do is gamble um, card flipping to get these points because that's just not going to be a recipe for a success. So if you're 1500 uh, serpent points for the five star soul fully depends on whether you do the path or deck of fate i definitely one million percent suggest you try to complete the path of the serpent as opposed to the deck of fate like i said the deck of fate you cannot guarantee these points unless you can turn every single card which is usually about forty thousand points which is usually 20 20 sacred shards or so depending on how they do it 20 25 sacred shards so keep that in mind guys also, um, I'm only speculating that it's going to be shards. I can, I'm leaning more heavily that it will be champion training, and it makes sense for it to be shards. Um, but that's an unknown, right? For the path right now, it is known. We have four days to do it. We have good dungeon events. I suggest doing the path um, as opposed to the deck of fate, uh, or actually relying on the deck of fate for your points, to put it in a different way. But anyways, let's go over the current path that is open and see what we need to do. So we have dungeon diving and then we have shard summoning. Dungeon diving and shard summoning uh, over four days. Seems okay. Uh, current bro a point breakdown here, 4,500 for the sacred shard. It doesn't seem um, like there's any real surprises here. Sacred shard is going to be super um, efficient here to finish. Let's do the path breakdown, see which is the most optimal path here. All right, so got my trusty uh, snip tool here. So the lowest um, lowest hanging fruit for the points would probably be something like this. We're going to go and use the green for the beginner paths. There's your 50. So if you plan on skipping 250 in this event, there's your 50. You're going to need 7,500 points to do so. That's one sacred shard and some dungeon diving over four days. Very, very easy. You can pull uh, mystery shards as well, or just do dungeon diving over four days. But there it is. There's your 50 points. You're still in the running for the five star soul. Congratulations. <laughs> if you want to do a little bit more, so this, this one is going to be um, 7.5k points. And that's the lowest amount of points you need for the first Titan points. After that, you can add another 7.5k here for another 50 points so 100 would be 15k and then if you want to grab the last 200 points here it's going to be pretty uniformly 13 additional k on each side so you're getting what is it 200 or plus 13 so this one's going to be 28k and then you're going to get 300 for 41k so 41k that's less than 10 sacred shards to be honest um that's a relatively um in line i would say uh, amount of uh 
point for a basically glorified summoning event. So for most summoning events, let's say there was like uh, a rare and an epic in a summoning event, you're looking at spending eight to 10 sacred shards worth of value. In this one, you're getting 300 points for roughly nine sacred shards, which is in line roughly. So I would definitely suggest if you plan on doing this Mithral event to go as hard as you can in this event, as opposed to saving, uh, holding out for the Deck of Fate, because Deck of Fate, as we know, is unknown. Looking a little further in the schedule, it might be possible that the Deck of Fate is not shard related, just because they do still need a shard event coming next weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So there likely is another... Um, shard event coming here so deck of fate might just be training related plus maybe soul stones for example uh, which is a huge uh, drag considering if you had to do this whole event with training um, but that's something to consider as well there might be a summoning event on friday saturday sunday um, definitely they'll need to fill this up with some kind of event so stay tuned for that uh, in terms of uh, where you need to put your shards for these points Going back to the, the uh, path breakdown here, if you're interested in the avatar, you need to uh, switch my color here. And then we're going to pick up the two keys down here. And then you're going to unlock this and then pick up the Mithrala portrait there. It's actually not too expensive uh, on top of the uh, 300 key path. Um, if you want to get any of these bigger goodies, obviously this is going to be, um, let me change it up here go with purple so if you want to go for any of these bigger goodies the big stone and this big essence here is actually looking pretty nice to me i don't know why but it's going to be 37 extra k each that's kind of expensive um and the pool like i said is not super enticing for you to pull stuff however for myself personally i'm uh, pretty committed to completing this without too many shards uh, mainly because I do have this lined up with one of my Marius missions. So I'm on the 20 mythical artifact from any dungeon. This I will clear pretty easily just from grinding dungeons like Ice Golem and Fire Knight. Uh, so no issues there. So I'll definitely be putting some energy into grinding um, dungeons to complete uh, some path points. So that's going to be my uh, strategy there. Like I said, guys, if you guys are not going for the 1500 max five star soul from Mithrod, Go for the 250s and call it a day. It is a four-day event, so you might be able to sneak down to maybe one of the 100s, but I wouldn't sweat it too much. Um, this looks like a relatively easy event in terms of point uh, accumulation. 300 points here is pretty solid. And dungeon diving in good dungeon diving of dungeon events are pretty good. Um, the summon event, you know, obviously not super great, but uh, if you so choose to pull some shards, it's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, I definitely am in favor of this event uh, to pick up some of the early uh, easy points. So definitely uh, reassess your account to do that. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my insight on this event, the Titan event, the path event breakdown. Uh, like I said, Mithra is a very, very good champion. Everybody gets her uh, eventually. And uh, she is used in many, many areas, basically all areas of the game to various levels of uh, success um, but she's a great champion one of the best free champions for sure giving up five or five star soul for her is insane um, in a lot of cases it's probably better than getting like a mid-tier or low-end um, legendary fusion so i would consider um i would definitely consider going for a five star soul but it's not the end of the world if you don't get the five star soul picking up the like i said the one star for 7500 hp or the three star for plus 400 defense is very good some of these extra rewards along the way are fine uh, the gear and the soul stone for example if you want to go for tier four you can definitely skip the uh, mithrala four star soul but some of these goodies are pretty nice here they definitely position the legendary skill tome um, very strategically very close to the four star because if you get the legendary tome at 960 you might as well get the four star and then that's going to lead you into the fifth milestone for the five star um, but don't feel too bad if you're going to get stopped here at the three star it's going to be good enough for your mithrala but anyways guys that's going to be it for the video let me know in the comments below what you guys are planning to do like i said i'm going to be going for the five star for my mithrala my mithrala currently only has a two star so i'm definitely going for the five star 
Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate your time as always. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.